It's YouTube Wednesday, part six. This is not a normal screen mask sculpture. You'll notice it's a little bit different. It has some different features. Um, we did a, a parody show of 80 slashers and we put in a scream-like character called Shriek. So we sculpted our own mask. So this is an homage to the Scream 6 paint job on our Shriek mask that we did here for Dead by Dark Hour show. First thing we have to do here was make sure that the mold was good and level. It seems like that actually is a little much. Used brushes are actually pretty great for this. I'm going to go ahead and open up our latex bucket. I'm going to start to pour it nice and smooth and watching to make sure that it flows into all of the areas I need it to. This chin is very pronounced and has a very deep pocket to it. So I'm going to pour back into here a little bit and we're just going to go ahead and fill it right to the brim. I've got a good defined cut line on this mask so I can see where it needs to be filled to. That's it. Then I'm just gonna grab a lid here and we'll let that sit for two hours. Yeah. And we're just gonna take this guy up right here. Thank goodness, on camera, I did not spill. Now we're gonna set that up like that. Let it drain for 10 minutes. So the screen mask is ready to pull here. We're just gonna go ahead and give it powder. I should say this is our shriek mask. We're gonna make sure we pull it away from everything, opposite of the direction that it might be in. And it's free. We have a good clean pull. Boom, shakalaka. Two out of three. In order to replicate the Scream 6 mask, uh, the crackle effect that's on it, I'm gonna try a couple different things. I'm gonna use Elmer's glue and mix it with a little bit of uh, water. That is effectively water. Throw that to my kidneys. And that kind of makes the glue into a bit of a slurry. That is what I want. I'm gonna paint the Elmer's everywhere over the mask. I'm gonna go back and make it thicker where I want thicker crackle. Drew, is this the one you sculpted? Yeah. The Scream 6 has very thick cracking by the nose area there. So I'm gonna put thicker Elmer's glue on there. And the forehead has a lot thicker cracking. So I'll put on thicker glue. I need to let that dry for about 15 minutes. Mask number two. We all know that regular acrylic is not a good way to paint latex masks because it cracks. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage in order to get the breaking, cracking effect. And I'm just gonna hog this on thick and gross as if I were painting normally. Mask number three. I do not recommend painting a mask with spray paint. This is not good for the mask. 
but it might give us the effect that we want because this paint will dry and crack off. And I should be able to seal it and freeze the cracking. Okay, these two have to dry, the glue is drying, there we go. Okay, so this is the glue and the glue is now dried, but it's not like all the way dry. So I'm going to paint this mask. Once again, I'm using the acrylic because I want to get that double crack, but I'm going to seal this. And when I seal it, I'm also going to, uh, I'm going to seal it and then I'll stain it. And now the roughness of how I put the glue on is a benefit in getting me enough texture where I can dry brush on this paint. I'm not afraid to go thick with the paint because the thicker that is, the more it's gonna crack. This needs to dry. Mask number three. I'm gonna do just a, another layer of spray paint. This is all I'm gonna do. Spray paint, nice and thick. I want that thick enough to crack. Okay, done. This is our mask number one, which is the Elmer's glue. And I just wanna show you guys the fine cracking that we're getting on it. That's a good crackle. It's not as heavy as I would like, but I'm thinking that I can stain it and get, make those more prominent. Let's look at mask number two, which was just painted with uh, acrylic over top of a latex mask base. And the whole theory behind this is that the acrylic will crack. So we're getting some cracking, but it's not really coming off. Yeah, it's not doing that much. So this one I don't really like. Yeah, this is just cracking off, which is what we want in this case. Spray paint also should crack off of the mask. Apparently, spray paint is great to use on masks. This is, this is not cracking. I don't, I don't understand that at all. I, I have no idea. Why don't we spray paint masks? This is on there. Like, this is a good base. All right, I'm just gonna mix up a black wash. Water and black paint. There's only about that much paint left in there. I'm gonna fill this up with water. Firstly, I just want to see if this is going to stain the white. Not bad, not bad. But it is reactivating the glue underneath. like that distressing. I think that looks really nice. I'm gonna grab a little more white and punch up its whiteness in some areas. And then I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of black wax. I wanna scrub the color on basically. I don't think this turned out white enough. Very textured, it's heavy, and I don't hate that. This is a wax that I use a lot from Sculpt Nouveau. I buy it from Bitty Mold Supply. Okay, the wax is breaking down the spray paint because the wax, if I use this on top of the other stuff, it wouldn't break it down. This is breaking down the spray paint because it has a solvent in it. So I'm not getting a, my true wax here. It's mixing. The wax takes a long time to dry. So let's just see what happens. And that's why we experiment. That's why we do different things. It also should clean off pretty good because it doesn't dry fast. Very different look, but I don't hate that either. I think it needs some of the sharp blacks back in it. It's number two. We're back to having a two. We should see the wax just reacting differently than it did on the other one. So you're not getting that bleed that same way. We get 
most of the wax off so I can spread around what I have on here. Look where those meet, that's really nice. I'm just scrubbing this wax around. Okay, that's gonna need more white too, also. I think we are getting a little more cracking on number one as that glue reactivates a bit. That's nice. Let's go to number two. This is just my black wash, but I'm just using it like a really thin paint to darken up the areas that I want really dark. This is our number one. Yeah, nice clean brush. Bit of that brown, bring it back in, a little bit of warmth. Okay, I like that guy. Two, going back with a little more white to brighten this up. But again, a dry brush. I want to scrub in the color in order to preserve some texture. But bring up some of these areas that I think got too dark. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I want to bring in some of this brown tone into this guy. What is it? Warmth that the original vinyl that the screen masks were made out of yellowed over time. And that kind of showed through, it wore through their paint application. And I kind of think that's what they were going for in that look. And what I'm focusing on is not color, it's temperature. This is a very cool palette and I'm adding warmth into that palette. Do the same here. on this dowel rod. Ah, oil rough bronze, good enough. It's not at all what I intended, but I don't hate it. I like that that lessens the strengths of those cracks, but it's still there. This is probably my favorite. Number one. Real subtle cracking is what I'm going for there. I don't want any big, super heavy lines. I think I'm good with them. I actually like that these aren't straight black because they're calmer. Uh, black is really harsh. This is one. 
this was two, and this was three. And that's my rank. I like one best, two second best, three third best. So this mask, we did Elmer's glue, let that dry to tack, and then we painted that with just regular acrylic paint, and then that gave us a cracking process, a black wash to accept the cracks, then we did the dry brush of white, um, and then we went in and put a little bit of this color in there uh, with just some spray paint uh, and a one inch chip brush, and then we uh, painted on the cracks with a sharp wooden stick. The original screen masks were all vinyl, and this is a latex mask that we poured up in-house. All of this will work on a vinyl mask. You'll have the same problems that I had, um, although you might get the cracking on the spray paint that I did not get on the latex, because the latex base, I, it bonded very well to that. I will hand over to Rue in order to do screen in the eyes and the fabric and get these guys. All right, so we're gonna put screen in the eyes and mouth of these masks. You won't even see the screen, it'll just look solid black. I'm not really measuring, I'm just kind of cutting out a chunk. I'm going to use these latex pieces that I cut out of these masks as a template. I'll just mark it a little bit bigger than what these actually are, so I have room to glue it on. Piece on here, and then I'm going to take my marker, and I'm just gonna quick do a rough outline of where that is. All I'm gonna do is take the mask itself, and I'm just gonna lay the screen in place. Now this is a hot glue gun. There are a big difference between hot glue and thermal adhesives. Uh, thermal adhesives are what we actually use. This one in particular is extremely flexible. For something that you're doing like this, you could just use a regular black hot glue, but it is not gonna give you the flexibility. If we're hot enough now, it's actually starting to drizzle out, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put the glue just along the edges. And because it's going into screen, it's actually creating that uh, mechanical adhesion that we really like. The original mask does not have a screen on the mouth. This one does. We generally make things for haunted house applications. So somebody would be running around like crazy all over the place, being super active. I like them to be able to breathe. Also, if you were to talk, nobody would be able to hear you. It'd just come up, come on, there's enough one, I'm gonna hear your voice. So if you have the screen there, you can actually speak through it. At a distance, it all disappears very nicely, and that's how you end up making a screen mask. Go make stuff! It's time for some Patreon shoutouts. John Prusak in memoriam and all mentors like him. Kelly, the Hudgens Moo family, Pew Pew Pew, Big Dog Masks, Brianna and Ellie Johnson, Mike Krasanowski, go make stuff.